But this one doesn't even make sounds, and Tom bought it for me, so you have to like it. Why do I have to like it? Because Tom bought it. He kind of bought it under duress. We were at a toy store at the mall, and I spotted <laughs> it, and he was standing there going, like I was like I was a dog who peed on the carpet. No. <laughs> <laughs> You do not need another hippo. No, absolutely not. No. And I kind of pouted, I guess. And he sort of grumbled and snatched it. Fine. Give me the damn hippo. He bought it. You own him. No, I don't. You totally he's own just, him. He's just really nice and generous and wouldn't leave a hippo without a home. There was a giant purple hippo in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. People sent me pictures of it. It was pretty awesome. I and I that. actually realized that I have a Christmas ornament of that exact hippo balloon that someone gave me years ago. But I didn't know it would just said Macy's hippo ornament. And I was like, well, all right, that's cool. I didn't realize it was an actual balloon. <laughs> but yes, he tried to resist buying me the hippo. And I kind of did the Puss in Boots face. And he very begrudgingly snatched the hippo. Oh, fine, I'll buy the hippo. Well, speaking of shopping, Shop. it's that time again. And yeah, the, the things that have happened. Have I'm actually happened. really lucky. My current job, Black Friday, isn't really a thing. So we were actually pretty slow on Friday, which was weird. Were you whacking over there? Never say that phrase again. I'm whacking my computer. One of the fans is going, eh. Well, That's I don't annoying. care what you whack, but don't do it on the air, man. Whack on your own personal time. <laughs> Do the damn news. Let's do the damn news. All right, here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And the starting story tonight isn't strictly Black Friday, but I'm crazy for it kind of says a whole bunch about us so as a materialistic society um are you aware of the whole shantytown situation in like brazil and other other like like china and other places where they have like you know really wealthy buildings and then all these little ramshackle things all assembled where people who can't afford yeah food live yeah um this is apparently caught on with the upper crust Oh, I saw you this. saw this. this is fucking horrible. This is, I think, this is this is this is our vomit. This is our vomitorium, essentially. This, this is this is our this is our sign of decline and fall. I think. Uh, rich tourists now staying in luxury shanty towns. So they can pretend to be poor. This, I think, goes along with, you know, you were just making fun of a Hunger Games candy bars. And that to me is something very much that like the capital type characters would. Do. Yeah. Oh, we have gourmet chocolate modeled after the the quaint poor people like this is that. They probably have a District 12 theme park in the capital like where are those people? Well, not us, but like. The Moya Luxury Hotel and Spa created a fake shanty town so that its wealthy clientele can pretend to slum it within the safe environment of a private game reserve. But don't worry, even though the shanty town has intricately designed colorful iron shacks, outdoor bathrooms, and battery operated radios, things aren't too realistic for comfort. This is the only shanty town in the world equipped with underfloor heating and wireless internet access its website boasts that's a quote so you can post your selfies using the outdoor bathroom 
there's actually a word for this. The article says it. And I think this is probably one of the most disgusting words we've ever devised. Poverty tourism, also known as poorism, There was someone at my job that uh, okay. was talking about the a party she was throwing. And I, I work with a lot of like rich bitches now. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was talking about a party she was throwing that was going to be a redneck theme party. And like they wanted everybody to dress like rednecks. And like it was and the more she described it, it was basically like a poor people party. Like, we're only buying really, really cheap beer and, you know, nobody's allowed to wear anything name brand. And like, I was like, oh, are you going to put like a toilet on your front lawn? And she was like, no, why would I do that? And, I'm like, and the more she talked about it, it became clear that it was just like a poor people theme party she was throwing. And I'm like, oh, you're an asshole. OK, good to know. And now there's a business around being an asshole. Yep. So that's kind of setting our materialistic, pampered, spoiled tone for this week. Because it's time now to get into the meat of Black Friday. And let's, we'll start, we'll start small. Um, when I am involved in the public, when I have to go out among people, I tend to recognize that the men in the uniforms with the guns, they kind of have something called authority. And whether I like it or not, what they say goes. That's how it works. Respect my authority. Now, potentially, I could get into an argument with one of these gentlemen, perhaps over something like a protest or, you know, something I really felt inspired by. Man pepper sprayed over argument at New Jersey Walmart. Police said they pepper sprayed and arrested a man in a northern New Jersey Walmart after a Thanksgiving shopping dispute. Already say 23 year old Richard Ramos became, quote, belligerent while arguing with a Walmart shopper over a television and then attacked a police officer when the manager called for help. Somebody else, a customer, like, tased somebody. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. We're doing that one. Oh, we'll get to that. Do you really want to die on this hill, Chuckles? This is the one. There's no way that TV is worth it. Like, I don't even understand people that go to Walmart on Black Friday because it is straight up fucking dangerous. Like, they, there is no sale that could convince me to basically go to a riot. That's basically what you're signing up to do. Yeah. You're signing up to attend a riot. Because that's what happens at pretty much every Walmart in the country. I don't know how they're even allowed to get away with this. Like, I don't know how they've managed to not be charged with inciting a riot the way they handle things. Because at certain times of the day, they just drop a pallet of some electronic item or whatever. And people go at it like zombies on a kill. Like, I honestly, at this point, think it's gotten to a place where they need to be charged with inciting a riot. Because if you're showing Zombie. up to Walmart on Black Friday, you're basically signing up to maybe get trampled. That's, that's a wonderful image. Roku! Roku! That's what it's Roku. like. You watch these videos and it's like a fucking zombie movie. It's like somebody just fell, the big, the big boobed blonde chick <sighs> just fell down and all the walkers are coming. I would, fast zombies. I would stand up to a cop over my beliefs, over my ideals, over over the defense of someone who is weaker than myself. Not a, Not a TV. No. It's a it's just a and you, and you know what the real motherfucker is? 
that TV is going to be cheaper the day after Christmas. But cheaper, the TV's already cheaper online right now. Yeah. If you had just stayed home and gone to fucking Google shopping, you would have found that same TV for cheaper. You probably could have got it cheaper on Amazon all along. No, no. You had to go and get your ass pepper sprayed because a uh, TV! TV! Fucker, the whole thing. Oh, but wait, it, as if it's not authority causing problems, it's uh, it's shoppers among each other. And for this one, we got video! This is from... Uh, Black Friday is our Hunger Games. Kind of, Eddie <laughs> Versetti. Yeah, it kind of is. Because it's not the rich people out doing this shit and getting trampled and tasered and shot. They don't need to. Nope. This one comes to us from Philadelphia. Women get into Black Friday stun gun fight inside the mall. Let's let's have a look here, shall we? <sighs> At the uh, here we are. Oh, and they are going the fuck at it. There was a big brawl in my life. And there's the stun gun. There's the stun gun. And then somebody yelled gun and they like the whole mall like went pandemonium. Apparently it was a big deal. Luckily, there wasn't a gun. There was just a bunch of teenagers in a fight. But one woman apparently used a stun gun on another after an all out brawl inside of the Franklin Mills Mall in Northeast Philadelphia. Is it Philadelphia where they shot Dawn of the Dead? The original? Isn't that where the mall was? Sure. I think so. I think it was Philadelphia. I have seen that movie, both versions. Mm. Um, Mike Napol Napolitano? Napolitano. 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 A name up here. Mike was in the mall with two of his friends when they came up on the fight. It started out one couple was fighting with another couple. They had words. The guys got into a fight and then the girls. One couple, they were like a family and all. With a young child in a stroller. I've said this before with regard to people who shop during snowstorms and weather emergencies. Leave the fucking kids out of it. Like, you want to go earn your Darwin Award? Godspeed. Leave your kids at home. You know that kid was... Alone. Even in a... Leave your kids at home. Even in a stroller, that kid was just like, I'm so ashamed of my parents right now. I know, that kid was like, really? I can't take you anywhere. You taught me sharing in kindergarten, and now you're pulling this shit. Yeah. If I have to give Bobby my fucking sippy cup, knock this shit off. And honestly, like, the Black Friday thing has really gotten out of hand, and I kind of think taking small children out on that day to any shopping establishment is endangerment. Well, like, you are, you. Want support? Try Airborne with 13 vitamins. What's running an ad? <laughs> oh, this website's running an ad about Airborne. We'll yeah. make okay. it stop. So, shit doesn't work anyway. No, it doesn't. So, well, it's it's funny you uh you mentioned the kids. <laughs> um. Because I don't like giving you these segues today, man. No, you don't. You really don't after this one. This one is, um, this one is something. Oh, I want to stress that the kid is okay. That's the important part. The kid is fine. You're going to wish his dad wasn't. From Orlando, Florida. Oh, yes. Florida. Father arrested after baby left alone in car. Someone did this last year. No, he forgot his kid at the store because he was getting he had to fit his TV in the car. <laughs> well, this one was a father was arrested on Thanksgiving Day on a felony child neglect charge after police say he left his two month old son alone out in a car outside the store. Ida Hassan Kuder Darwash, that's a lot of names, 34, old enough to know better, booked in the Orange County Jail off the arrest Thursday evening. According to Florida Highway Patrol, uh, Trooper Eddie Rivera was working off-duty detail when he noticed uh, that 
at the Best Buy, of course, when a man approached him and told him there was a baby alone in the car. The infant was asleep in the back seat and locked in the car when Rivera found him. Ten minutes, no one came forward. Trooper broke the window, but, quote, couldn't get the child to wake up. Paramedics were called. The kid's fine. Don't worry, the kid's fine. Um, certainly after, Darwash returned to the car and identified himself as the father. This is where it gets worse. The trooper asked why the infant was left alone in the car. The father replied that he thought his wife had the child. The wife was located standing in line at a store in the shopping center. There's two of you. I mean, I feel like in the grand design of the universe, there's a reason why there's two parents and only one baby. So you can team up on that shit. Somebody has to be the one that figures out. Gosh. Yeah, it's like... Is anybody watching the baby? It's like if one brain breaks down... You have you a backup. backup. You've got a second brain. You've got somebody else to be like, you know, sometimes you have to feed them. Oh, my God. That's right. You have to feed them. Maybe that's why it's screaming. Like, I, you know, people, you forget things. You lose your keys. I've lost my glasses while they're on my face. These things happen. Humans have glitches. That's why you have a backup parent or, you know, a friend or a sibling or something and if you're the backup parent and your job is stay in the car watching the baby, don't get the fuck out of the car and go shopping. No. Especially at the Best Buy. Best Buy is worse than Walmart. Anywhere. It doesn't matter where. Well, I don't I'm, care if you're going okay. shopping at your local yeah. granola homegrown co-op. Okay, well, you, you just got to You got Okay. You gotta, you don't gotta, leave the baby in the car. You, you got it. You, and, like... I don't know how cold it was in Florida, but up here, it was pretty damn cold on Black Friday. Florida, probably less so, but still, like, even if it's 60 degrees out, the baby's going to get kind of chilly. What about twins? All right, well, that's a good point. And then you have triplets and then you're fine. Then you're kind of fucked. Literally, that's how you got there. Um... So I don't see all the answers to the universe. I just have crackpot theories, okay? Oh my god. Some might say yes. It'd be a pretty fucked up world if I was God. Um I can tell you damn sure Firestar would be in Avengers 2 if I was God. So I know there were many hot items this year. Uh, I remember I saw a video of a bunch of, uh, there was a a stack of PS4s and everybody ran and swarmed it like fucking jackals. Just yanking PS4s out of the stack. And of course there was your iPhones, your iPads. They had the the iPad, was iPad Retina is what it's called or or the iPad Mini or whichever. I don't know. Stuff! All gadgets and toys and things. Many things you would expect people to to want to get in on and, and be violent about because it's a PS4. It's what four hundred bucks for one of those, and an iPad's like two hundred, three hundred bu- bucks. I don't know anything about gaming systems. On Thanksgiving, my nephew made fun of me for like ten minutes because I didn't know how to work the Wii, and I was like, "Let me explain something to you, Pat. Aunt Tara's poor. She can't afford a Wii." <laughs> well. This is not what I would have expected to have a riot start over. But I guess it is kind of a sign of our times. Um, This is from Walmart. People beat each other up over towels. Walmart advertised low-priced TVs, laptops, kitchenware. The store's best-selling item was towels. Well, I mean, you have to know where your towel is. I think it's fairly obvious that our world is on the brink of decline. And so we're all going to want to know where our motherfucking towel is pretty goddamn soon. According to Walmart, they sold 2.8 million towels. Um, 
Customers were turning violent to buy the inexpensive ones. Uh, there's a fight at the West Memphis Walt Mart in the towel aisle. People are now risking their lives for a towel set they wanted for the bathroom. Local Arkansas, Arkansas news sites reported that Walmart customers were indeed fighting over towels. Um, I, I let me see. Get into this. This, yeah, fight breaks out in Walmart stores. Um, apparently, they were they these uh these were twenty nine cent towels. Was the deal? How good can a towel be? Twenty nine cents. Twenty nine cents. I mean, maybe I'm kind of a snob, but like you get out of the shower, you don't want to just wrap yourself in any fucking towel. It's got to be a good towel. And I used to get really annoyed at my ex-husband because he would use fabric softener on the towels, which like kills their absorbance level. So the towels wouldn't even get you dry after a while. And we had to keep buying new towels because the dumbass used fabric softener on them. And you can't do that because it kills their absorbency. So like... You need good towels and you need to not fuck up your towels. 29 cent towels are not going to help you. You want to know what's worse? This wasn't just West Memphis. This no, was it also like it's all over. Johnson, Tennessee. And fight broke out at Walmart. An ambulance had to come. That was in Philadelphia. Um, let's see, Alabama. Towels! Is there a towel shortage in the South or something? S Towels. Okay. Are there, are, there, are there soggy people wandering FD, south in search of something to dry them that I don't know about? Francis DeGuire. No one threw in the towel on that fight. I, why were these all in the south? Is there some great? No, there's not. Not to my knowledge. Massive humidity situation down there. Are you all drying yourselves with your own hair? Is there a towel situation that we're having the towel hunger games? Because none of these stories ha seem to happen up where I am. We seem to be all good with the towels. I'm we wondering where our towel is. I'm wondering if they do this stuff just to set off the fights for their own amusement. This is what I'm saying. Like at this point, Walmart needs to be charged with inciting a riot every fucking Black Friday. I wonder if the Walton they family these situations. I wonder if the Walton family has like cameras set up. It's like some kind of sick gladiatorial shit. Over towels. Like, let's wash the unwashed masses kill each other over <laughs> products. It creeps me out, man. Towels. 29 cent towels. You know what? Those towels are not going to get your butt dry. 29 cents, absolutely not. You're going to walk out and you're still going to be soggy. The, the problem is, also, you can spend 29 cents on a towel and end up in traction, which will probably cost you closer to $50,000, or you can wait two days, come back, and buy the same towel for maybe 75 cents. Yeah. I think in the long run. When really what you should just do is suck it up and go to JCPenney and pay $4.99 for a towel that will actually get you dry and be fluffy. <laughs> 29 cents. <sighs> All right. Our final one tonight is I thought we'd need to bring it back home to, to, to our own, our own familiar territory. And you know so what? You know, like a Black Friday naked rampage? Well, kind of. You know, it didn't have to do with Black Friday, but it, it was from a, a town we're familiar with um, that keeps showing up on the show in a disturbing regularity and not Florida. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let us once again return to Beaverton. Yes, Beaverton, Oregon. Man with no pants sets fire to Beaverton hotel room, motel room. Man is facing arson charges that police said he started a fire in a hotel room and refused to come out. Beaverton police were called to the Beaverton Budget Inn, where a person staying in the hotel reported a fire in a neighboring room. The witnesses said a table inside the room was on fire and smoke was coming out of the room. 
Police said the man who had been staying in the room, Christopher Cohn, 67, was walking through the parking lot with no pants on at the time. He returned to the room as police arrived at the scene. He then refused to leave the room for an hour before he was taken into custody. I feel like there's a Craigslist misconnection going on here between this guy <laughs> and no pants hotel guy with the fire extinguisher. Up his <laughs> <laughs> like I can see the ad now like we both enjoy being pantsless in hotels I had the fire you had the hose let's work it out <laughs> these two are meant for each other obviously they're I, like I gotta say he looks star cross lovers thing going on here he looks awfully pleased to be arrested that he, he looks, he looks like, pretty cheerful he yeah. looks a sweet old guy just hi how you doing? You know, he looks pretty pleased with him. Uh, uh, what I want to understand is he left the room, no pants, but went back into the burning room and didn't want to leave. Maybe the fire really gets him going. That's why he had no pants on. And how cold was it out there? It was it just you know? Oh, cool. Well, all the Pacific Northwest does get pretty humid, so maybe the fire was his way of drying out the room. <laughs> Will Jr. Because of our tragic national towel shortage. Will Jr. says, sir, sir, please come out with your hands up. No, you're just going to yell at me. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I think we need to get this guy together with Mr. Sheffield and they can just have pantsless fire and fire extinguisher parties to their heart's content. Yeah. Just, I... Of all the fucking things. All the fucking things. How did the fire get... Was he just, like... Why did they let him go back into the room that was on fire in the first place? Maybe he's... Oh, my keys are in there. Oh, okay. Wait a second! If the room's on fire, presumably I, they're evacuating the hotel. Why was he allowed to go back in in the first place? That's some pretty shoddy police work. I'm imagining some strange noises off sort of comedy of errors leading from this guy checking in to suddenly his he's has no pants and the room's on fire. There's something something hilarious happened in that room that we're never going to be privy to. You know, yeah, like a little little snippet of planes, trains and automobiles that we're just never going to see. He accidentally set his pants on fire while they were on that table and he was going out to get a new pair of pants. And then it all just went wrong. <laughs> but it's like sort of like Mr. Bean, just, you know, we, we don't it, it, we don't get to see it. I feel a little sad here. I yeah, missed. there was some series of unfortunate events that we missed. Maybe he was going out because he heard there was a good Black Friday sale on pants. And it was a door buster, so he did not have time to put that fire out. He had to get to the Walmart immediately so but, that the pants would not be gone. But he forgot his wallet. And had to go back. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Because you do not want to be the guy in the line at the Walmart on Black Friday who forgot his wallet. You will die. Sadly, that's probably true. You, you, they'd be like lynchings and they would they would go down to the home improvement aisle and they would tie you up on a PVC crucifix and shit. The thing I never understood when I worked in the mall and Black Friday was a thing was you'd have people that would bring in returns on Black Friday and you'd be like. Are you high? Yeah. Like, you came out to do this today? Do you know what day it is in this country? What are you doing? And they wouldn't buy anything else. They just wanted to return something. And you're like, do you just hate life? Like, are, is this like some kind of weird, elaborate suicide attempt? What, what are you doing? Computer Ronan, it was a fire sale.
What? Yeah. And what confuses me about this story is that it doesn't say at the end that alcohol was involved. Because usually it does. Nope. So, yeah, that was... Well, one thing we learned this week is don't go back for your wallet. No, if you've already set the room on fire, it's a loss. Whatever's in there. Just don't. You know what? You didn't want it when the room was set on fire. You're just going to have to replace it. I just imagine the poor police officers is like, Jesus Christ. Really? This is my day. This is my fucking Because this happened on November 27th. Let's see, when when was that? That's the day before Thanksgiving. I could be home. So that cop, that cop had plenty to be thankful for, but that day was over. Yeah. What are you thankful was- for, honey? I'm thankful my pants are not on fire. Maybe this guy was just a real pathological liar. Maybe if you tell enough lies, enough prevarications, enough untruths, your pants will spontaneously catch fire and you will have to flee. We learned this week that um, rich people are awful, awful human beings. Yeah. Poorism. Poorism. Because when you're so rich, you want to pretend to be poor. Yeah. And spend a premium to do so. Maybe that'll come back around, though. And like the poor fetishism will get to the point that all the rich people are like wearing cheap shit and buying and like shopping at Walmart. And Jay-Z will start rapping about wearing like shit from Kohl's. And that'll be the new thing. Wouldn't that be interesting? And, and like the luxury goods market will tank. Mm-hmm. And suddenly like Payless will start charging $200 for shoes because that'll be the in vogue thing. And it wouldn't be Payless, it'd be pay more. Hence the irony. I mean, Payless already has like $60 shoes now because they have all these designer collaborations and it's like, I know they're Christian Siriano shoes and normally be maybe $2,000, but I don't go to Payless to pay $60 for shoes, okay? I go to Payless to buy shoes that are made entirely out of rubber, 20 bucks, and that's it. We learned this week there are many reasons to take an ideological stand, but a cheap television is not one of them. Don't stick it to the man or your fucking insignia TV. Trust me, the picture quality sucks. I've seen them. There are better things to get arrested over. What kind of TV do I have? Emerson. We've learned that being a parent does not make you immune from being a fucking child. We've learned that a lot of times. We've learned that a lot of times, but this... That's pretty much a given. Like, having a kid does not magically turn you into a grown-up, no matter how much people think it does. And there are people that think it does. I just I'm just imagining the look on that kid's face in the sitting in the stroller. Just, oh, mommy stage taser and the lady. Yep. This is my genetic predisposition right in front of me. Shit. We've learned the reason there are two parents is that in case one of you decides to be an idiot, you have a backup. I have a backup brain. You need a designated smart person. Do you have your parenting buddy? Which one of you is the smart one today? Which is why it's one of the many reasons it's so much harder for single parents, because you have to be on all the time. You have no backup. You have to never be the idiot. And you know how hard that is? Everybody's an idiot sometimes. You're a single parent. You don't get to ever be an idiot. I don't have kids. I don't have kids and I'm already an idiot. Exactly. Like, you don't have anybody else to take a shift not being an idiot. And I guess finally we learned tonight, don't 
buy a towel for 29 cents. It's not worth it. Also, riot. You need good towels. <laughs> and until the tragic towel shortage comes, I don't think it's worth rioting over over towels at all. Well, I think they at least tested the blood absorbency there in the store. Look, it just mops it right up. These are good, honey. And don't use fabric softener on your towels. It will ruin them. I'm serious. It does. It kills the absorbency. You can't do that. <sighs> uh, Aren't I so educational? I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that. 